And we have all seen him on Top Chef twice. He is one of the stars of the upcoming Bravo show, Life After Top Chef. He owns not one, but two restaurants in Washington, D.C. One is called Good Stuff, and the other is called We the Pizza. Don't you love that? A restaurant called We the Pizza? I know. And he's also the, uh, the, the author of this new book called Good Stuff which he will be signing after the show. Wait, is it there? Did it fall down or something? Anyway, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm, rousing welcome to Chef Spike Mendelssohn. Thank you, thank Hello, you very Chef. much. How are you today? I'm doing well. Good. Fantastic. Yeah, it was my, uh, my fault, I dropped the book. Oh, you dropped the low. book. Okay, can, well you're the only one you. allowed to drop your book, of course. Here is the book. Right here. I did it on purpose. I can have a moment with it. So and I can show you it to everybody. Are. There and he's yeah. going to be signing them afterwards, of course, right over there in the corner. Sure. After the demo Stresayon that you're about to do. We oui, chef. What are you uh, planning on cooking for us today, uh, Chef Mendelssohn? We're going to do something a, a little bit seasonal and something a little light and fresh. So we're going to do a cauliflower couscous. It's a little play on uh, couscous Yum. with a little bit of uh, you know toasted pine nuts, some fresh peas. Some mushrooms, some herbs. You put a little bit of salmon. You, you know, you know, saute a little bit of salmon and a little bit of a yo yogurt vinaigrette. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And so is yeah. the water because it's already boiling. I know the water is boiling furiously. So we're going to turn it down. But before you put ever what you're going to put into the water, is it so that you just opened a restaurant two days ago? I did. I did. Uh, a lot of people would call me insane for being here. Yeah. Uh, Hello. But we did. Uh, we just opened our second good stuff eatery uh, in Crystal City. Do we have any local DC folks in the crowd? No? Can we fake like we have some local DC? Come on, Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, we love uh, Washington, D.C. My first restaurant after uh, Top Chef was a Good Stuff Eatery. It's a hamburger, uh, milkshake, and french fry place. It's all, uh, you know, classic stuff. It's done fun. It's uh, introduced in a really nice environment. Our second restaurant was We The Pizza, which was all about New York-style pizza, homemade sodas, and homemade gelato. Uh, and I'm happy to say we just launched our pilot expansion store in Crystal City. Uh, it's very exciting for us. We did that about two days ago. You launched it. Yeah, we okay. just, la just launched it. That means it, it took off for outer space. It took, it's, it's gone. It's, it's nowhere there. to be found anymore. It's in the stratosphere of the restaurant world. It is, it We've is. We've all got to go there, you guys. It's, it's over there with like the molecular gastronomy. Kind is of it? Yeah, it's over there. Okay, that's good. But you're talking about milkshakes and hamburgers and delicious french fries. Delicious french fries, but yes. But right now you're talking about some salmon and some boiling water. So without further ado, yes. I'm going to let Chef Spike Mendelson do his thing. And uh, we'll have some questions and commentary and all that good stuff when we are good and ready sure. for it. All sure. righty. Yeah, and don't be afraid. I, I love these things to be a little bit more interactive. So at any point in the demo, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And, and we'll get a microphone and you can ask me what I'm doing. Um, I just want to actually, you know, I want to thank Dix for providing me with knives wherever you are. Evidently, you can't uh, take knives in your carry-on in the airport, so I had to leave mine behind. But, so thank you, Dix, for the knives. Uh, and like I said, today we're going to do a dish. Uh, it's, a, it's called, I call it cauliflower couscous because I'm literally going to use uh, this cauliflower here and we're just going to shave it so it kind of looks like couscous. So it's, it's really not couscous at all. It's, it's cauliflower couscous. We're going to add some uh, really nice texture with some fresh peas, some toasted pine nuts, some fresh herbs. We're going to do a little bit of a yogurt vinaigrette and we're going to sear salmon really, really nice and lightly. You guys excited? Yeah? That's not excited enough for me. I need a little bit more energy from you guys this morning. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So how was F Fabio Viviani's pool? Did he have this many people here? Yeah. Well, not quite as many as you, but no, close. Okay, no, just, I'm just joking. All right, so I guess we're going to start with the, uh, what, what I like to start first is I want to make the yogurt sauce because uh, I want to let it kind of marinate, infuse with a lot of flavors. So uh, being that I'm Greek, I'm a little bit biased to Greek yogurt. My... Uh, my grandmother used to teach me how to make this, actually, and it's really, really easily, uh, easy. Um, super thick, fresh Greek yogurt. Uh, all you really have to do is, is boil uh, a gallon of milk in a pot uh, until it kind of scalded it. Uh, let it kind of cool down to room temperature. And then what I usually do is I take a little bit of yogurt and I put it in the pot. I put the lid over the pot, I put it under the sink for about 24 hours. Uh, and this is kind of a really old school technique. After 24 hours, my grandmother used to take a little pillowcase put the yogurt in it, 
and then hang it in the shower. I know it's not too sanitary, so you could kind of hang it wherever else you want, but it would just kind of slowly drip all the juices out of it. And you know, another day in the pillowcase, you'd be left with this super thick, really, really great yogurt. So, but today we're just going to add this little bit of uh, this Greek yogurt right here. You guys fans of, of Greek yogurt? Yeah? Cool. You guys having a good time here at the NRI show? Yeah, this is always a fun place for me to come uh, to. Uh, like I said earlier, it's kind of a Disney World for chefs. You, got, you know, I have all these new toys to play with, new things to taste, super fun. All right, so we're just gonna add a little bit of yogurt and then uh, a little bit of crushed garlic. Um, again, so this is kind of reminiscent to what a tzatziki is. Uh, who knows what tzatziki is out there, yeah? My fellow Greeks in the crowd, right? No, sir? Right there, you're not Greek? You look Greek, a little bit. What's your name, sir? Pardon? Richard? Could, Richard, can you come up here and help me with this uh, yogurt sauce? Come Stir on, around Richard. a little bit. Can we come get a, a round of applause for Richard? Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard. Can come help me Richard. out a little bit? Where are you from, sir? I'm from northwest suburbs of Chicago. Northwest suburbs of Chicago. Meet Chef Spike Mendelson. Again, big round of applause for Richard. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. So what we're going to do here is... Um, I need to wash my hands. You need to wash your hands? Don't I? Yeah, I guess you do. You need to wash your hands. First rule. Oh, it's fine. Right over there. Go 60, ahead, 63 Richard. 63 degree water. Just put it in there. Sous vide sink. There you go. Perfect. So all I want you to do is... Uh, <laughs> don't be scared. Don't be scared. My French, my French chef in France used to beat me with this to get things done. All right, so a little trick with, uh, with garlic. Uh, if you add a little salt on top of garlic when you're chopping it, it's going to kind of break it down a little bit faster. Do you guys know this trick? Yes. Yes? Oh, I brought the right man for the job. So, yeah, just pound it a little bit. Pound it? Yeah, just, nah, I'm just kidding. I just wanted to see you, you to do that. It? No, you could do that. So, you can see it's immediately breaking down, right? It is breaking down. Breaking down. You're going to do the knife trick. Though. You want me to do the knife trick? Gonna... Can you guys see this on camera right here? All right, so really what you do is you take the side of your knife, you got the salt on it, I'm gonna smash and you just smash, just like that. This is a, some of the fun times in the kitchen here. Just smashing. You want to try that out a little bit? No? With your clean? Okay, all right, fine. No one's tasting the food today. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Then let's go ahead. Except for me. So you I'll know how good. You can't give it out, right? No, I can't. I can't give it out. So there we go. So while, while you do that, I'm going to take these, these great little herbs here. Uh, and again, I don't really love using uh, knives with herbs. Whenever I get a chance to just tear the herbs is kind of what I love doing. Um, you know, you see a lot of people with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, when you're sitting at home and you're, maybe you're, your knives aren't really that sharp and you're going through the herbs, A, you want to make sure you're not like chopping the herbs because you're releasing all the oils and all the flavor is going to end up in the cutting board. So if you are going to use a knife with herbs, very good job. Very good very job, good. Richard. Okay. Very good job. Can I get a round of applause for Richard? I got garlic all over your hands. That's okay. Is it okay? Yeah, girls love it. Girls love it. Trust me. The ladies. The, the ladies. The females. The too. females. I think everyone loves it, no? Yeah. All right. Well, a round of applause for coming and crushing the garlic. Yeah, you're done a little bit. Great Just a little you. bit. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, again, so, so if you are going to use a knife, make sure you cut through your herbs like this so you're actually slicing, not like this, all right, because that's going to leave all the flavor in there and you want the most out of your herbs. But if you're okay with not really using a knife, just tear them. See that? Look how delicate that is. You guys look so serious out there. Look at this. Just tearing. All right, so I got the, I got the, uh, the yogurt in here. We got a little bit of dill. Uh, again, recipes are just guidelines. What I love to tell people is, uh, you know, use a little bit of your own inspiration or what you kind of love eating. If you want to throw a little tarragon in here, throw some tarragon in here. If you want to throw chives in, throw some chives in. Uh, anything really goes as long as you're happy and it tastes good. So I think that's a little bit enough there. We're going to take a, a little bit of a lemon. Again, lemons, you got to roll them, right? You guys roll your lemons before you cut them? Yeah. Yes, just some of you. If you don't, make sure you do, because what you're doing right now is you're kind of releasing the juices. You ever, you ever take a lemon and cut right into it and you squeeze in like nothing comes out? That's because you're not rolling your lemons. So let's make sure you roll your lemons. Uh, if I had a zester, do I have a box grater? Up here? Yeah, a little bit. I love using the whole entire ingredient. Uh, so make sure you use your zest at home. Just kind of run it through there just a little bit. it help if you take the tag off so you don't get a little bit of paper in it. No one saw that. No one saw that. Uh, and then just zest it a little bit. Just get, some, get as much as you can out of your ingredients is the rule of thumb here. Uh, so just a little bit. 
a zest in there. I'm going to throw the garlic. And now we're going to cut the lemon. I like cutting the side of the lemon because I don't get any pits in it. And then I use the whole lemon for other things. So we're just going to cut another side of it right here. Just like that. See, no pits. You get all the juice. If you take all four sides off, right? There you go. Save this for lemonade, you know, just mash it, add some sugar, some ice water, make lemonade out of it. So we're just gonna add a little bit more lemon, just like that. Is my trash can all the way back here? We're gonna move it a little closer. So you guys have any questions out there while I'm, while I'm doing this demo? Anybody? Who, who has a question for Chef Mendelssohn? Yes, right here in the front row. What was the hardest part about being on your Iron Chef competition versus Top Chef? Uh, the hardest part about being on Iron Chef competition, um, well, you know, I think Top Chef, uh, well, back, back in my heyday when I was on the, uh, on the show, uh, it, it was uh, giving a chance for uh, chefs that were really known or cooks that were trying to make, make a difference in their lives. Um, Iron Chef, you're, you're cooking with the likes of Michael Chiarello, Marcus Samuelson, which I went head to head against in the first episode. For those who don't know, I went on Iron Chef. I got kicked off first episode. I took a vacation to Hawaii for three weeks just to get over it. No, but see, that, 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 that was like the hardest part is um, you're, you're, you're dealing with just a, a, a different style of chefs. You're dealing with chefs that have, you know, been around the block a lot, have opened up empires. Uh, and here I am, this like young kid just coming in, uh, competing with them. So it was definitely an honor. Um, but you know what? It, it, I'm kind of addicted to these competition shows. I will be on the next Iron Chef redemption season to kind of redeem myself. So you guys, yeah, a little bit more. Come on, I need, I need all the encouragement Come on. I can get. I, so I, I think that's the biggest difference because I was cooking with a lot of my, um, you know, the people that inspired me as a young kid, like Marcus Samuelson is a chef that I looked up to my, you know, my whole entire life. He's, he's amazing. So just to be sitting there competing head to head, uh, you know, was something that was, was really, really intense. So anything else? Yes. Yes. How was it like, what was it like to, um, <clears throat> to cook eight different dishes in less than an hour? Eight different dishes? Like, how can you manage to do that? Because I've that? seen it being done. Are we talking about Iron Chef or Top Chef? Uh, Iron Chef. Iron Chef? Um, it's always really intense. I mean, you know, if in a kitchen, in your everyday kitchen, you're, you're actually cooking a whole menu at the same time. So uh, to be in a competition, uh, it's just, it, what it really is, it's the time restraints that get you. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like you have to do it in 15 minutes rather than, you know, a, a whole dinner service. Um, all right, so we're going to let the yogurt here uh, marinate with a little bit of, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more dill in there. I don't see enough, okay? Again, this was Greek yogurt, some fresh dill, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little lemon juice to take away the, the tang, add some sourness to it. We're just going to let it sit. Um, I'm going to saute some mushrooms here and get the water boiling again. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, so I got these oysters, mushrooms here. Really, really delicious. This is going to be part of the couscous, so I'm just going to tear these up just a little bit, just like that. All right, make little, little pieces, little bite-sized pieces out of them. Um, you know, I love using oysters. They got a lot of flavor. They also absorb uh, whatever oil that you're going to be cooking with them. Uh, the trick with the mushroom, with like how I like to cook mushrooms, is um, you know, you see a lot of people putting like olive oil first and maybe some butter and then adding your mushrooms. Um, the thing about that is like a mushroom's kind of like a sponge. It really, really absorbs any type of liquid or oil that you're going to put in it. So I, I still want to get that flavor in the mushroom, but I kind of want to minimize it first. And I want to concentrate the flavors that this, this delicious mushroom has. So I usually put them in a dry pan on low heat. You hear that? That's dry pan. It's a, the it's a sound of a dry pan. Mushrooms hitting a dry pan. Uh, and what's going to happen is the heat is going to start releasing all the, uh, the water uh, and it's going to evaporate and then what's going to happen, it's going to, it's going to leave you with uh, a really intense mushroom flavor because what you're really doing is you're kind of concentrating all those natural juices before adding oil. So then I'll finish them with a little bit of oil and uh, I'll finish them with a little salt and pepper and then at the last minute I'll toss some thyme. Um, I always like putting my herbs in last minute. 
because uh, I feel if you put them in a little too soon, uh, you're going to lose flavor. Uh, they're going to get dark, and the, the flavor will kind of dissipate. So make sure you always add your herbs last minute. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to add a little salt just to, to jumpstart the, uh, the extraction of moisture in here. And while I'm doing this, is I can't, I can't stop but think uh, about my culinary days. I have a certified master chef over, the, over there, Thomas Griffiths. Can you stand up, please, for a second? Can we give a round of applause to Thomas Griffiths? He was my chef at culinary school. Uh, I'm sure he's got a lot of good stories about me. So, uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of nice, uh, you know, after, you know, I think I graduated in 2005. Seven years later, he's sitting here at one of my demos. Uh, it's kind of, uh, it's putting all the pressure on me right now. You're not going to kick me off the stage, are you? Like, send me packing or with my knives or anything, chef. No? All right, so a little bit of pepper while these mushrooms go. All right, and I have a little bit of a... Uh, Oil. Can I get another volunteer to come up stage real quick? Yeah? You put your phone away. No pictures. Come on. Round of applause. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay? All right. Round of applause for Lindsay, guys. Come on. Come on, Lindsay. So, Lindsay, when you go to the supermarket and you're looking for peas, what do you usually buy? Snow peas. Snow peas. Like these ones? Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. So you're pretty good at kind of popping these little suckers out of here? Well, I like the makeup you got going on today. Thank you. Yeah, a little odd. What are you laughing about? <laughs> look, all right, so look at these things. These are really great. I love these when these are, are in season. I literally, I used to have to sit in a French kitchen for hours, hours, doing this, one by one, and always a couple went missing, and my chef used to always get really mad because to me, raw, like, they taste really good raw, don't they? Uh -huh. Don't you eat them raw? Yeah, they're delicious, right? You're gonna pop I one like in. Them in salads. You like them in salads? Really, really good for texture, right? Yep. So that's kind of what we're gonna use them here. They got a little bit of a sweet sweetness to them, natural sweetness, and that's kind of what I'm looking for because the couscous is gonna be a curry cauliflower couscous. It's gonna have that that deep, like kind of flavor to it. And then we're gonna add these. It's gonna add a little texture. It's gonna balance out with the sweetness. Round of applause. Wow, you did that really quickly. You really do buy these all the time, don't you? All right, thank you so much for coming up and helping me out with that. Make sure you buy my cookbook, right? Visit my restaurants in DC. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just kinda dip them in there really quick. Shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. Again, I don't wanna boil them too much. Uh, I, I just wanna kinda cook them just a little bit, just to take the bite out a little bit and definitely brighten them up. All right, so now we got our mushrooms sitting here, cooking, beautiful. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Any more questions out in the crowd? We've got one right over here, Chef Mendelssohn. Yes. yes. What is one of your earliest food memories? Pardon? One of your earliest food memories. Earliest food memories. It definitely has to be my grandmother. Uh, kind of sit back in the day, she used to make me kefetas. Uh, they're Greek meatballs. Uh, they're really, really delicious. Uh, what she does is she soaks a little bit of, um, of bread uh, in, a, in some milk. Uh, and then she, she used to kind of just sit there on a, on a bench, I mean on a stool at home and just make them forever. And, and she used to add a little bit of wine. She cooked cook them in tomato sauce. And I used to just kind of sit there right next to her, uh, just kind of enjoying it so that's like kind of one of my earliest food memories we also make Greek bread a lot so that was one of the things as you can see I got my mushrooms in here they got a nice nice little texture on the edges they're, they're cooking really well I just added a little bit of the olive oil and now I'm finishing it off with thyme just like I told you I was gonna do just like that Do you guys smell this at all yeah I smell it smells delicious I'm actually gonna taste it another thing about cooking uh, you always want to taste your food right? Uh, if you don't taste in between stages, you're never really going to know uh, how, what the, the end product's going to be. All right, so the peas, you see how green they are compared to, uh, where's the close-up cam? Is it following me? Oh, there we go. See how green they are? What you would usually do is you'd have a nice little ice water bath so you can cool these down right away so you can keep the texture. But today we're just going to put them in here. Um, and then I'm going to add the mushrooms in here also. A little saute. Okay, and this is kind of be the base of our, our uh, all the texture and flavors for our couscous. I'm gonna turn that off, we're gonna add this up. 
All right, time for the cauliflower. Do you guys know this cauliflower couscous trick? Has anybody ever seen this before? No? All right, that's fun. So what you do is you take a box grater, uh, and my knife is right over here. Just kind of cut the cauliflower a little bit. And what you're going to want to do is you want to kind of put the box grater in a bowl. You just kind of want to just grind it just like that. You guys see that? See what's going on here? So again, this is, you know, as a chef, you're always kind of a kitchen trying to discover new ways to use ingredients in a cool manner that makes sense, you know, without losing the, uh, you know, what you're really trying to create. And as you can see, it's coming off in shards like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to saute that in a little bit of olive oil. We're going to add a, a little bit of the curry in it. And uh, we're going to let it go for a little bit and just cook, cook it down. It's going to have a really, really nice texture to it. So any, uh, any more questions out in the crowd there? We've well, got I one right away. over here, Chef Mendelson. Yes. Hi. I've been privileged to mentor um, the Wisconsin Hospitality Pro Start team this year. We just returned from Nationals in Baltimore. And Alex had a question about how do you handle nerves when you're, when you're presenting and competing? And also, how did you pick your school for culinary? How do you handle what? Nerves. Like, do you get nervous? Oh, I thought nerds. I'm like, what are you talking about? How do you handle the nerds, uh, like, Are you too? calling me a nerd right now? Because <laughs> I was a nerd. Still am a nerd. Um, how do you handle nerves? Uh, I think it's just, you know, you have to build confidence. Uh, and uh, for instance, I'm glad you really brought that up because I was uh, seeing the Pro Star kids today uh, cooking um, just a little bit earlier, right before my demo. And they can't be more than 18 years old, I think, the kids. And uh, that's the greatest thing a young aspiring chef can do is uh, just get right in there and take all your opportunities and, and, and get in there and cook. And you're going to fail. Do you know what I mean? Failure to me is, is something that's, that's magical because it's going to teach you how to be so much better in the future. Uh, and you want to go through those tough experiences and you want to get out there and cook a comp you know, in a competition show. I mean, for instance, for me, I, you know, I've gotten kicked off of now, what, three competition shows? It's going to be about a fourth coming soon. So, um, you know, I think what the Pro Star kids are doing is brilliant. Uh, they're really, really getting their, their, their base training and, and they're getting all that pressure out of the way. And that's how you deal with nerves because when you know you're good at something and you have the confidence, nerves won't be anything. Like, they, they won't even matter. So, so to me, it's just uh, gain a lot, a lot of experience. Um, and about going to culinary school, uh, I went to the CIA, uh, Culinary Institute of America in High Park. Um, I grew up in a restaurant family. So to me, uh, the restaurant business was something very daunting and something I, I kind of didn't really want to do because I saw my parents, you know, always working late nights, working weekends. Uh, and, and, you know, late hours, and it wasn't really a regular lifestyle. So for me, it's like something I definitely didn't want to do. I did not want to become a chef. Uh, but, uh, you know, what happened was my, my grandfather actually got diagnosed with uh, cancer. So my parents had to leave their fine dining uh, restaurant and go back to Montreal. And they told me, uh, Spike, we really need your help at the restaurant to run it. And I was, think I was about 18 years old at the time. Uh, so they left me with this, uh, you know, three-star fine dining restaurant at 19 years old, it was about 200 seats to run all on my own. It's the restaurant I really grew up in. I was a dishwasher, salad person, busboy. I mean, you name it, I, I grew up and I did it in the restaurant. Um, so at 19 years old, I was handed this huge, you know, this huge restaurant to run on my own. My parents came about nine months later after taking care of my grandfather. Um, and they saw the restaurant running better, more efficiently than they had left it. Uh, so they took the opportunity to make a deal with me. They're like, listen, you stick around one more year at this restaurant uh, and show us that you really do have the passion for it. We'll send you to any culinary school you want. So for me, that's something very fortunate. Um, not everybody gets chances like that in life. Uh, what I do recommend for any young culinarians that are aspiring to become a chef uh, is you need on-the-job experience before you go to culinary school. Uh, you really do. You need at least a year, even two, working in a restaurant, finding out if it's really something for you. Um, the worst mistake anyone can do is, you know, go right to culinary school without having any restaurant experience, um, and then graduating, and then going into a restaurant and be like, really? Like, this is not what I signed up for. So uh, before you make that, you know, 
before you do that, make sure you want to go to culinary school. So that's my recommendation. And I think what the Pro Star kids are doing is amazing. Please visit them at the booth a little later on. Where's the booth? National, the National Roast, uh, Restaurant Association booth, right? right? Right in front. So go check out those kids. They're doing something really well over there. All right. What else we got? We got pickled raisins. Who likes golden raisins? Nobody? Okay. I love golden raisins. So we got a little bit of red wine vinegar here. And what we're going to do is I want to do like a flash pickle. So we're going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar, a little bit of sugar. Going to add the raisins in there. And really what we're going to let them do is macerate. I want the raisins to kind of bloom. I want them to absorb all this, all this flavor. This is really going to, is what's going to give the acid part of our dish. It's going to cut all, all the curry. It's going to cut the, the fattiness of like the mushrooms and the olive oil. So that's kind of what I want. We're going to put those in there. Actually, first, a little bit of sugar first. Bring it up to a boil. And a little bit of sugar in there. Mix it around. A little bit more red wine vinegar. Perfect. And now we're going to add the raisins. You guys still with me out there? Still alive? Yeah? Woo! That's it? Woo! I like my crowds to be a lot lively. I bet you've Guy Furio's up here. He had like sunglasses on the back of his head, squirting you guys with like water bottles. Should be grateful that I'm being kind to all of you. Uh, all right, so we got the raisins in here. They're going to be macerating a little bit. I think it's also time to cook our couscous. Oh, let's talk about pine nuts real quick. Again, add a little nut nutty tone to the whole dish. Um, I've toasted. I'd I did the liberty of toasting these a little bit earlier. Uh, it's really easy. You can either do them in a pan just with a little bit of olive oil or you could put them in the oven. But you have to watch your nuts because they will burn on you. Um, okay. All right, buddy. Um, there's carryover heat when you're toasting nuts. Okay? Uh, and what that means is that when they're in the oven, they may look done. You may be waiting for them to be that perfect golden brown and like, oh my God, those are beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done. And you're waiting till the last minute to, to take them out. Well, what happens is most likely if you're waiting for that last minute to be perfectly, you're going to take them out, you're going to walk away, forget about them, but they have all these oils in them and they're going to continue to cook. And then you're going to come back and you're going to have these burnt nuts and you're going to be really disappointed. So. Take your nuts out a little bit beforehand and also don't put them in a bowl. Don't put them in a stainless bowl or a glass bowl where they'll continue cooking. You kind of want to spread them out on a sheet tray. You guys got that? All right, cool. So I, I toasted the nuts already. We, we won't go through that. Uh, let's get to the cauliflower couscous. A little bit of olive oil right here. Okay, let's see how hot the pan is. Again, you don't want this pan to be too hot. You don't want to scorch the cauliflower. Just want to cook it down nice and slow. You come in for a shot? <laughs> all right, there you go. Um, all right, so we're going to wait till this comes up a little heat. I could take a couple more questions if anybody has. We've got one right over here, Chef Mendelssohn. Yes, my dear. I have two questions. One is what is your favorite recipe in your cookbook? And what's your favorite ingredient to cook with? Oh, oh. My favorite recipe in my cookbook. Wow. Thank you for the cookbook plug again. Uh, oh, you know what's my favorite recipe in my cookbook? It's Uncle D's chili. Uh, again, Good Stuff Eatery is inspired by, let's say, 40 years of the restaurant business, but I'm not talking about my years. I'm talking about my parents' years and like fine dining and all that, those hectic type of restaurants. So what we did is we opened up a fast casual restaurant uh, we wanted the experience of opening a restaurant to be very laid back, no pressure, and fun. And I'm smoking over here, but it's okay. We're going to just pull it off. We're going to add that, just like that. See, I can multitask. We'll flip that around a little bit, cool down the pan, put it back on the heat, turn the heat down. And we'll get back to the Uncle D story. So Uncle D is my uncle. Um, I have a lot of family-inspired recipes in here. That's what my uh, restaurant's all about. It's all, it's all about family. I'm, I'm in business with my family. The recipes are for my family. Uh, the burgers on the menu are burgers that my grandfather used to cook on his porch and wrap in wax paper. There's a lot of family stories. But Uncle D uh, was a very funny character. He was a, a guy that was full of shtick. And he used to run rampant in his restaurant all the time. Um, and he used to tell, he used to tell everybody, anybody, like any scraps, like any of these scraps that you see over here that I'm putting over there, uh, he'd run around to you and be like, 
If, you, if he saw you almost putting it in the garbage can, he'd be like, what are you doing? Put it in the chili. So everything in the kitchen and Uncle D's restaurant went in the chili. Uh, not that this chili is made of scraps, but that's why we named it uh, Uncle D's Chili. That's, that's probably one of my favorite recipes. Uh, what was, did you have two questions in that one? What's, what's your favorite ingredient to cook with? Oh, my favorite ingredient to cook with. That's a hard one because um, I'm pretty well versed in, uh, in all sorts of different cuisines. After culinary school, well during culinary school I spent a year in France learning uh, classic French cuisine. Uh, after culinary school, uh, I took a hiatus to Vietnam for about a year and a half where I cooked with all sorts of different exotic ingredients, which I really, really loved. Um, so right now, I'd have to say it's, it's cooking with like all those exotic ingredients. I love, you know, lemongrass and kefir lime and curry and coconut milk and I love all those flavors. They really pop when you're eating food. They give you like this feeling. Um, so I think that, you know, fish sauce is one of my secret weapons. You guys cook with fish sauce a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Always makes everything a little, a little really good. You, you can't go too much though, right? You got to be careful with the fish sauce. Pardon? No, you can't leave the bottle open or it's like fish sauce poopery everywhere. So as you can see, we're just going to uh, saute those. I got my salt and pepper over here. Uh, we're going to season it a little bit and then we're going to add some of the curry. All right, here we go. Just a little bit of curry. I mean a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then some curry. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, who likes cooking with curry out there? Yeah. Well, curry doesn't have to just be in curry sauces or chicken. I mean, as you can see, I'm using it in here in this, this vegetable preparation. We're going to... Get, get all that deep. The cool thing about uh, toasting uh, the curry with the cauliflower is that curry gets better when it's toasted. So if you were to saute your cauliflower and then put it in a bowl and then put the curry in it, that wouldn't really be proper technique. You kind of want to throw the curry in with it and cook it down and toast it, get the aroma, uh, get the most out of it. So I'm going to saute that just a little bit more, just like that. And then I'm going to start heating up my pan for my salmon a little slowly, non-stick pan. For the salmon, I'm going to put the heat up. I could take another question out there. Right over here. Yes, sir. Since you've lost four comp three competitions and you're <laughs> going into a fourth, what will you do in, it, in order to win that fourth one? To what win one? Yeah. How well, will you be different? This is what I've been telling everybody lately. Uh, I've made a very, very, very good living right now out of losing competition shows. So... I feel like if I win, it might be like the axe, like, you know, this is how it all ends. So I'm very comfortable just going and competing, trying to do my best and see where I end up. But uh, winning can be something really scary for me. So uh, I, I like the track on my end. I, listen, I got, I got two restaurants in the D.C. area. I'm on a, a full uh, Good Stuff Eatery expansion plan, which means we're, we're opening up in uh, Georgetown. We just opened up in Crystal City. We're coming to Chicago, like I said earlier. Uh, it's really, really exciting for me. Um, at the end of the day, it's, you know, this, this whole TV thing, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon to us. I mean, you know, four years ago, five years ago, there was no Top Chef. Uh, and now there's all sorts of numerous different competition shows. It really allows chefs to put their, their skills on display. Uh, but not only put their, their own skills on display, but really drive a lot, lots of people to the restaurants through marketing and publicity of uh, being on shows with that. And that's kind of that's kind of like the big picture. It, it's it's really about promoting what you're doing in in real life than rather what's going on in the competition show. But hell, I would like to win. I mean, it'd be awesome. I mean, I'm saying this now, but then if I win Iron Chef, I'd be like, yeah, you know, I went up there. I knew I was gonna win. But yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's a really good lineup this year, so. We have another question, sure. Chef Mendelssohn. Where did you study in France? In France, I studied at uh, Gérard Boyer. He was a famous chef, uh, still is a famous chef. He had three Michelin stars for 20 years. Um, his castle, he, he owned a Relais Chateau castle, uh, and it was uh, called Les Crieurs. It was in, uh, in Reims, which is Reims, where Champagne comes from. So it was in the Champagne district. Uh, I was a very young kid uh, cooking, you know, with uh, I think the staff there was about 40 uh, French chefs. I was the only uh, English speaking kid there. I got completely picked on the whole time. 
Um, it, was a, it was an experience that really set the bar for the rest of my life. Um, it was a silent kitchen, which means you couldn't talk. Um, and it was intense. It was really, really intense, and, and I loved it. Uh, I don't think my, the CIA was really too happy with me because uh, you do this externship that you're supposed to go for four months and then come back to school. Uh, I was in France. I didn't come back for a year. Uh, it was very nice for the school just to let me pick up, pick back off where I left off and continue my, uh, my school. So that's, that's where I did my training. You can look it up. I really recommend people to go look, check that restaurant out online. It's, it's, it's truly an amazing thing. So what we got here is we got this couscous is done. We're going to add it to the bowl. All right. We're going to mix it all around. OK. Can you guys see that up there? Yeah? We're going to add a little bit of uh, the toasted pine nuts now. Perfect. Let's taste these, see how they are. Mmm, sour is kind of what you want and slightly sweet. That's perfect. And soon we're going to be uh, cooking our, um, our salmon. I'm going to show you my technique and others' technique on how to cook salmon. So we're going to put the golden raisins in here just like that. You guys getting hungry? What are you going to do after this since you can't eat this food? No? All right, here we go. We're going to mix it all around. That looks beautiful. I love herbs. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some herbs. Tarragon. Right, it's an herb that I really love using. Gonna add a little bit of that. Rip some parsley over here. Uh, what else we got in here? Oh, a little cilantro, because we got that curry in there, so maybe this will be a little refreshing. Again, I love tearing my herbs, so that's what I'm doing. I am tearing herbs. Not slicing them, because I want all the flavor to be in here. Something, uh, I feel like we're gonna blow up over here. Okay, no worries, so we're gonna mix that all up. Does that look delicious to you guys? Yeah? Does that look delicious to y'all? Yeah. yeah. Come on. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, time to cook salmon. Now, I think the one common mistake that, that, that people do uh, when they're cooking salmon maybe is uh, the heat's too high. Um, you know, I love cooking my fish. And again, this is personal stuff. Uh, you know, cooking is, is meant to be fun. Uh, I don't really feel like there's rules. You know, you, you, know, you, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but for me, I like to see a little bit of a whispering smoke when it's just like, hey, like, like it's close there. Um, and then I like to put the fish on one side, and then I turn the heat down a little bit. And I like to cook the fish on one side all the way through as much as I can uh, at a very slow temperature. Because what you're going to really get is a really nice crust, uh, and you're going to get a very even temperature. Uh, you can finish it in the oven if you'd like. Uh, it's not needed. But uh, we'll see what happens. So we're going to salt the fish, a little bit of pepper. Uh, people don't like, you know, some chefs say you put pepper on fish, it looks ugly because there's black specks on it. I think pepper tastes really good. And I don't know, I, I like using it. So we're going to put it there. I'm going to put it flesh side down. You can see it didn't make too much noise. It's not too aggressive. Non-stick pan definitely helps. All right, another trick when you're, when you're putting things in pan, the lean. Remember the lean so you don't burn yourself, right? See how the oil's all is away from me? I'm leaning it away so I can put my fish in the pan, right? Just like that without burning myself. It's not going to splatter on me and I'm going to lean it back and all the oil goes back. I give a little shake, do a little dance for y'all. Yeah, I bet you didn't know I had dancing skills, right? All right, there we go. We're going to season the top of the fish. Okay, and we're going to leave this go. I'm going to turn the heat down. All right, I'm going to get a little plating area over here ready. I'm going to take some more questions, please. This is the time to get them. We've got one right over here, Chef Mendelssohn. Yes. yes. Hi, where did you go to school for dance? For dance? No, I'm teasing. Uh, well, I noticed that a lot of you guys like to eyeball your, your food while you're cooking it. When you're writing a cookbook, how do you go from eyeballing it to coming up with exact measurements for things? I know a lot of them are, are family recipes. Oh, but oh, 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 don't get mistaken. None of these yeah. recipes work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I said there were guidelines for a reason, all right? Uh, no, you know, it, writing a cookbook is something very difficult. It's, uh, again, you know, um, 
you know, there's, there's one, re there's actually a recipe here that was misprinted. It was uh, uh, making, a ch making a homemade cheddar cheese sauce. Um, and for some reason, in the print, it came out with two, using two cups of flour to make your roux instead of two tablespoons of flour. So I've never been able to live this down with this cookbook. Like, I get constant emails like, your cheddar, your cheddar cheese sauce sucks. You don't know what you're doing. So it's very important that you thoroughly go through your recipes. Uh, sometimes, you know, chef schedules are really busy, so hiring someone to consult and help test all your recipes that you write is something that, that can, can really kind of help out. Um, for, for this one, I didn't do that. For the next one, maybe I'll do it. This one wasn't too serious for me. It was a burger, shake, french fry book. It, you know, it wasn't as detailed as, let's say, uh, you know, Thomas Keller's cookbook or, or uh, you know, someone of, of, of that nature. So uh, it was a little bit easier to do. Any other questions? Yes, we've got one right over here, Chef Mendelssohn. For uh, culinary students, what would you say would be like the most important skill for you to practice to build your foundation? Um, tasting. Get out there, eat food, visit restaurants, go to chefs, get your palate going, expand it. Uh, you you really want to be able to like your like the taste and your palate is really important because that's all the difference on how good your food's going to be. You can have all the skills in the world if you. You don't have, you know, a really a good palate or know what you're you're doing. I th I think um, I think that's all the difference. Uh, that that answer, right? Okay. Anybody else? Questions? I mean, definitely knife skills. You won't be able to cut something if you don't have knife skills. Yes, sir. I'm an older guy. I play in the kitchen. And uh, is there any suggestions you have for someone like me? I've been guest chef in a couple of uh, top kitchens and love it, but I don't see this as a career. Is there something that I can do to hone my skills better? To hone your skills better? Um, I mean, Rachel Ray, 30 Minute Meals is a really good show to watch. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, I love Rachel Ray, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, watching, uh, I mean, the, the ph phenomena with like chefs being on TV and the access to many like cooking shows and competition shows is a really great way to, to kind of watch and see what's different. And then kind of taking some notes down while you're watching these shows, like having a notepad on the coffee table or something like that. And then like, you know, inviting people over, just entertain, have, have some people over or entertain. Uh, I do know there's a couple courses out there at culinary schools that you can take that, uh, you know, are for people that just are looking to hone their skills a little bit. Um, you know, you can do your own little pop-up restaurant. Pop-ups are like so hip these days, do you know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, you know, it's just, uh, again, cooking to me, it, it's not, it's less, it's less work and a lot more fun and pleasurable. So uh, to me, there's nothing better than inviting a bunch of friends over uh, or family, uh, you know, and have everybody kind of get involved and get them in the kitchen, open a couple bottles of wine, you know, have some like guidelines of where you want the dinner to go and like what you want to cook, but just see what happens and, and just, you know, that's pretty much it. Or you can rent a chef like myself and I could come to your house and I can cook alongside with you. No, I, I, you know, it's just, I think, don't take all the, the pressure away from you and just have a little bit more of a, a fun time. Uh, you know, visit restaurants, uh, attend shows like this, like you're doing right now. I mean, I'm sure you're going to go home and make this cauliflower couscous, aren't you? Of course you are. All right. We have another question right over here, Chef Mendelson. Hi. You said you did not want to be in the restaurant business because your parents' restaurant. What was the turning point? What made you say, okay, I want to make a career out of this? Uh, the turning point for me was, uh, like I said, my grandfather was passing away from cancer, so I, I ran my parents' restaurant for a good year. Um, I was still, uh, I was in the stage uh, not knowing what I want to do in life. Um, so an opportunity to go to culinary school uh, was something obviously I was going to take. Do you know what I mean? Uh, my, my family was nice enough to make a deal with me, so uh, I took that opportunity. Um, and it's not until I actually went to culinary school that I really got inspired because, listen, there's a lot of different students that attend school. There's uh, career changers. Uh, there's um, kids right out of high school. Uh, you know, there, there's all sorts of different people that attend culinary school. 
I was one of those kids that grew up in a kitchen. I mean, there's kind of, I've seen everything that a restaurant can offer these days. I mean, I'm always learning, but I mean, I truly have lived the subculture of what the restaurant business is. Um, and that to me is a huge advantage when you go to culinary school, when you're standing next to somebody that, you know, is making a hollandaise for the first time or a velouté for the first time or a stock for the first time. To me, like, all this knowledge that I had as a kid was useless. Like, I, like, all right, all right, I know how to make a hollandaise, big deal, or a stock. You know, but at culinary school, like, I felt like I was ahead of the game a little bit. And that's kind of what gave me that edge and gave me, like, all right, you're... You're not just like worthless. You you actually have a skill. You know something uh, that could come uh, to really really help you out. And that's where I got. That's where my my passion really developed. As a, is at culinary school. I got I got confidence. We were talking about confidence before. That's where I got confidence. So then I did global culinary society at school. I I um, you know did this dinner series uh, with with a uh, with actually it was in, in chef's uh, chef's restaurant. It was uh, right. It was in your restaurant, chef, right? Pardon? Yeah, St. Andrew's restaurant where we put on these uh, East meets West dinners, right? This was extra. This wasn't part of the curriculum. This was just me doing uh, our thing where we raised money for 10 students to, come, to go to Vietnam. So, I mean, just think about it for one second. So here I am at culinary school. Like, I'm going to classes and everything. I have this confidence. I want to do something more. So I get involved. Now we're throwing like, these dinners, Eats Meets West, where we have like German meets Vietnamese cuisine, Chinese meets Vietnamese cuisine, uh, 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 French meets Vietnamese. It was always Vietnamese because that was you know, a part of it, and then another, uh, another chef. Uh, and then we raised money for 10 students to go to Vietnam. So we got all that money. 10 students did go to Vietnam. We spent about three weeks there. I never left. Uh, and then my whole Vietnamese cuisine and, and life started right there, like my passion for Vietnamese food. I, I spent a lot of time there. I came back to New York, New York City. I mean, I came back to New York and opened up a two-star restaurant with Drew Nipperant. It was a French Vietnamese fusion restaurant. So that's what I'm talking about, opportunities and, and confidence. And, you know, just, just getting involved is the most important thing when you're going to culinary school or you're a young culinarian. That's why these pro-star kids are ahead of the game at 18 years old. Um, it's because they're, they're getting involved and you never know what's going to come, come to. And th that's a perfect example of, of how getting involved can sh help shape your career. So you can see, the salmon is still in the pan. It's going very slowly. I know I've lost a couple guests in the meantime. We've got a couple new ones. But that's okay, because this salmon is going to be perfectly, perfectly cooked. Let's take a little peek on what we got going on over here. Oh yeah, nice little crust. All right, we're going to let that sit a little bit longer. I'll take a couple more questions, and then we're going to plate the food. Yes, right over here, Chef Mendelssohn. Thank you. So along your journey about being a chef and a restaurant owner, is there anything that you would do differently or anything that you kind of regret along the way? Uh, my journey? Yeah. Because I'm hoping to be like a future restaurant owner, so I'm trying to... Learn sure. The no, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I don't believe in, personally for me, I don't, I don't believe in looking back. Uh, I think everything that you do, um, you know, sums up to where you are. And, and even if there's, like I said, like failure, I was talking about a little bit of failure before, like there's times that you think that this is the direction you should go in and that's the direction you go on and then you fall flat on your face and you're, you're angry and you're miserable. But you know what? I think that's kind of what builds integrity. I think that's kind of what builds character in a person. And I think you need to go through those experiences to be, to be, to be able to be successful. And, and you know, uh, I also think you need to go through those experiences so you can help people like yourselves, you know, tell you, it's, you, don't, you can't be afraid of failure, uh, you know, or, or, or kind of making a bad call. Um, you know, I've made so many bad calls in my life. Really, really I have. Uh, I mean, after working in France for a year, I was completely broke, uh, and I couldn't get back to the United States of America. So, uh, because I worked for free in the castle. So, I took this opportunity uh, to go work in Luxembourg. Right, so I was like, oh, I'm this awesome chef. I just got out of this three Michelin star restaurant. I'm so cool. Uh, the French have accepted me. I'm going to Luxembourg. I'm taking this high profile job. I'm gonna earn some cash. Um, and yeah, it was a great experience, Luxembourg. It's a, it's a great town. I mean, uh, you know, after living there for a while, it seems like Groundhog Day. Every day is like the same in Luxembourg. Uh, but, you know, I took this job working at a like, Thai restaurant. 
I was living above the restaurant. The sommelier was sleeping on the floor in my kitchen. Do you know what I mean? Like, I took this opportunity, thought it was going to be amazing, but it turned out to be, like, the worst opportunities ever. I mean, like, I literally, I'd, I'd have to step over the sommelier of the restaurant to get out the front door. I mean, that's how shady it was. But you know what? I got to see Luxembourg. I got to see another part of the world. I, I definitely picked up a couple cooking tips from the Thai women. It wasn't all that bad. You got to look at the brighter side of things all the time. All the time, look at the brighter side of things. All right. I think we're ready for a little, a little flip, okay? Again, we're going to point the pan away from you so you don't get splashed. You're going to reach it under. And when I turn this over, you guys are going to be like, ooh, really, really loud, all right? All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Do you see that sear, though? Do you see what I'm talking about? No? Yeah? All right. One more ooh. Ooh. All right, one, one, one more. It's so much fun. Ah, all right, a little wow. All right. All right, do you see that beautiful crust that you see? So you're going to get a really, really nice texture on top of the fish. It's all caramelized, right? It's going to sit on its, on its belly, just a, I mean, on its, on its skin side, just for a second. And this will probably be a perfect medium rare. So I'm literally going to take the pan off the heat. It's still going to cook, right? It's going to sit there. Uh, and at this point, you could do anything. You could throw a little garlic in the pan, right? You could throw a little bit of thyme in the pan. Let's see if we got any thyme left. All right? You're just going to pop, right? And then you take a little bit of the oil, you just splash on top, just flavor it a little bit more. Why not, right? We got, we got it here. So there we go. Look, we're going to let that sit right there. And now we're going to plate. The cool thing about in a restaurant is you have to make the, the food really taste great. But if you make it look really great, it's like you get the whole package. So at home, it could be fun, you know, just to kind of play around and, and try to make stuff look pretty. So you can see we have all great, lots of great colors here. Green, it's very summery, it's inspiring for me. You got fresh herbs, you got the snow pea shoots, you got the mushrooms in here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna, we got the raisins for texture. Perfect, we're gonna add a little bit more. Around the plate, just like that. This, it went a little skimpy on this, on this one. I don't know why I'm plating three, but I feel like it's, I'm always plating for three judges, so it's, it's like a, a little bit more than a, just a habit. All right, then we're going to take this. But you know what? I think it's a little thick. It's not kind of falling off. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a lemon. We're going to roll it like this. Take all four sides off for right now because I don't want any pits. We're going to do the emerald. Bam. Sorry, emerald. OK. I'm going to whisk it a little bit. But you know what? A yogurt sauce is never finished without. I'm a good Greek boy, so a little bit of olive oil. Okay, all right, a little bit more olive oil. There you go. Okay, you can see it's becoming right where I want it. I'm gonna take some. I'm gonna put it on the plate just like that. Just around. Boop. Make little sound effects because I'm crazy like that. All right. Does that look delicious, guys, or? Yeah. Come on, how delicious does it look, you guys? Yes. All right, if you usually have, a, I'm gonna use a rag right now, but if you have a paper towel usually, it's nice to do a little drip, because you got the oil and the moisture from the fish, so just leave it on the spatula, get a little drip. Usually on a paper towel, don't do it on a side towel like I just did. All right, and then we're gonna just put that there, just like that. Drip. All right. Just like that. All right. And you know what? Just for good measure, let's just put a little bit more on top. Why not? It's, it's here. We don't want it to go to waste. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Spike Mendelssohn, let's show him some love. What do we really think? Come on. Yeah. Come on, I'm ready to hear you. Thank you, Spike Mendelson. Pleasure. Thank you. Spike will be signing his book right over there in the corner in just a few minutes. Thank you all for coming. coming